what is going on youtube i am back with another video and of course man i am in toro and finally you guys get to see some sunshine right charlotte has been crazy with the weather um but keep it short today man we are going to be going into three more tips and tricks for your uconnect settings on your challenger or charger scat pack right um there's so many things that i've been learning as of late all the way down to man you can even watch a youtube on this thing if you set it up and i haven't dove into it too crazy um but you know there, there's a lot that can be done with this Apple Play, et cetera. Um, but regardless, we're gonna be going over three more tips and tricks for your Uconnect, set, Uconnect settings. Um, and if you're new to the channel, make sure you like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff, and check out my previous video on the Uconnect settings, all right? Um, but other than that, let's get to it. Again, you guys, we're gonna be diving into our Uconnect system, all right? And again, you can kind of see mine is a little bit different than yours. You may see some of my icons are a little bit different go check out my last video and you'll be able to see how to change it even down to my demon background right um now the first thing i want to talk about this is more of a of a safety feature um this is going to be more for my uh women mopar drivers and things of that nature or even you know if you're somewhere that you're not familiar with this is super super important right um you're going to go to settings right and you're going to go to your doors and locks right now there's a few different things that you can do um as far as auto unlocks, flashing lights when you lock the door, horns and things like that. But what I want you guys to see um, is two different things, all right? The first one I'm gonna talk about is the first press of a key fob unlocks the driver door or oil doors, right? So let's say, again, this is more for my female drivers. If you're a female driver at a gas station, I always, always, always suggest just the driver door, right? Because nowadays you never know who's hiding on the other side of the car. Um, or just waiting on you to unlock the, unlock the car to be able to get in to the car, right? So that's a huge Uconnect setting that a lot of people don't know. And it's automatically set to all doors when you hit the unlock button, right? So definitely change that. That way when you're getting in and out of your car, it's only the driver's side door that unlocks. Makes it a whole lot harder for somebody to come steal your car because you guys know how crazy it is uh, with all these Mopars getting you know stolen, co-parted, all kinds of stuff, right? That's the first thing. Now, the second thing is our passive entry, right? So everybody knows what that is. That's literally if you have your car keys right by your car, you're able to just literally unlock the door by grabbing the handle. There's a little button on it, right? I'm gonna show you what that looks like here right now. All right, you guys, the passive entry, I want you guys to see. All right, I have my keys. One lock, two lock, sound. I'm gonna put my keys in my pocket, right? And of course the car is gonna notice that I have my keys. And then as soon as I come, there's a slight button you're just gonna press and it unlocks itself. Now I know my tent is dark, so you can't actually see the unlock, but I'm gonna lock it again. Again, I'm gonna come close by. It's gonna unlock it. Just noticing my hand is there and you can kind of hear it. And then boom. Now that you guys have seen that, what I also want you to see is the flashing lights and the horn, right? So. I always press my lock button twice. Like I'm OCD about that. So when I press it twice, I make sure that the horn goes off right now. You can change that to off first press, totally up to you, right? And again, I'm just changing it so you guys can see. Go ahead and go to second press, right? Now, again, that's just the horn. It's not gonna do anything extra. And of course, lights when you lock, right? That way you can see when the car is actually locking itself. I really, really like that setting super super helpful to know when the car is unlocked and locked all right so again your key fob unlocks just the driver door passive entry if you are around the car it makes it a little bit easier to unlock the door and it also helps with locking your keys in the car right um now most of these cars won't allow you to lock your keys in the car they'll either beep at you or won't even allow you to lock the doors at all um but again it's super super convenient to have a passive entry you can literally walk up to your car with your keys in the pocket and, and it opens the door for you, right? So that is the first Uconnect tip and trick that we're gonna go over. And the second one, again, is gonna be in settings as well. All right, you guys, now most of you guys know I have a 1320, all right? So I don't have a normal scat pack with quote unquote SRT pages, et cetera. Um, but overall, you can still set up your drive modes with how you like to drive your scat pack or 1320, all right? This is gonna be more for my 1320 drivers. And what you're gonna do, all right, to set up your custom drag mode or custom drive mode, whatever you wanna call it, right? So you're gonna go down here to the super track pack. You're gonna go ahead and press that button. And then what you will see is your 
drive modes, right? Um, now, I just have a current default mode of everything in normal. I don't like to drive in drag mode because I just heard, don't know for sure because I haven't actually been on the track specifically yet, um, but it can actually kind of harm your, your drag mode, right? And it make it a little lazy when it comes time, right? But you can actually, right? set it up and save it, right? So your default mode is kind of like your custom mode for your SRT pages, right? So let's say I wanted my suspension and steering to be in sport, right? If you want to do that, all right, again, you're gonna go to your performance control or your super track pack button here. We're gonna change it to sport. And it's fairly simple. All sport does for me is loosen up the, the steering a little bit and loosen up the suspension just some, um, because if you know, if you have a 1320, your suspension is way stiffer than your average scat pack, all right? So you don't see a lot of 1320 swinging, all right? That's just because they're meant to go in a straight line, all right? The suspension is set up totally, totally different. Um, and I definitely wouldn't mess up your suspension because those demon parts take forever to come and dodge, right? Um, but if you wanted to save that, it's literally coming out and then done, right? So now what you can see is my default mode is normal, all right, I have my paddle shifters, paddle shifters on, my traction on normal and suspension and steering in sport, right? So it's a super easy way to set it up. And of course, all on this performance uh, control pages, et cetera, you're gonna have your line lock, launch control and everything of that nature, right? But I'm gonna go ahead and put it back in what I normally go into and that's normal all the way across the board. And to me, it just rides a little bit better, um, you know, just for your, your daily drivability. All right, the next thing, all right, it's kind of simple, but a lot of people don't know. Um, if you've seen a Challenger with the DRL boards on or the halos on, right, and you always normally see um, the turn signals running all the time, right? That's my biggest pet peeve with these cars is people don't know you can turn that off, all right? You can turn those arms things off. It makes the car look terrible when, you know, driving with it, et cetera. Um, but all you'll have to do, again, is go to your settings. You're gonna go to your lights and you're gonna turn off your DRLs, right? that's crazy because you're gonna be like oh that's gonna turn off my halos blah 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 no that's not true all right the best way to run this car all right is on that setting right here all right for your halos to be on you just want it at the circle right so basically at the top okay and then here's one trick i also learned is the headlights with the wipers all right if it's raining you guys you're you need to run your headlights all right so even with it on the setting here as soon as it starts to rain my car automatically throws on my actual projector lights all right super fan of that and again all you have to do is turn on your headlight with the with the wipers and that's it all right and you can also change your flash or, or your lights with lock here as well outside of your doors and locks man um i know this one is a little kind of you know different a lot of people don't know that you can turn it off um but yes you can turn off those halos or them those turn signals and i want to say it's from 15 to 18 um they actually come that way and then i think from 19 on up uh dodge went ahead and just turned them off etc and you actually have to turn them on to be there right um but again those are your three tips and tricks for your uconnect um super easy kind of changes that help you out a little bit again the first one being for more of my female drivers just for safety things of that nature your drive mode setups and again if you have a regular scat pack you can actually customize a drive setting for you that you like to drive in and then of course it has eco mode uh sport track etc that you can automatically set up in your srt pages right but again this is a 1320 it's a little bit different than uh your normal srt pages for a scat pack right and then the last thing your drl running boards all right um and then being able to run headlights with the setting um on your pass i'm sorry on your left side on the driver's side being set up right there all right all right you guys so hopefully you enjoyed the three tips and tricks man um because again i'm still learning my you connect literally almost every day um but I am diving more into how to get the Apple Play running with YouTube and being able to mirror the phone screen, things of that nature. Um, but, you know, I'm not, not there yet. But I do want to show you guys something, man. I finally got my true camera up and running, man. I have been waiting to get this thing up and running, practice with it for the YouTube call out here in April. Um, if you don't know, I'm going to go ahead and run a video on this later on this week. This is literally the best camera for your kind of YouTube 
newbie startup YouTube kind of thing. Um, it shoots in 4K, it takes pictures, you have a wide angle lens, microphone, light, literally everything you could possibly need. Um, and I will drop the link in my next video, all right? I'm definitely gonna do an overview of it because this thing is crazy. Um, and if you use iMovie and things like that, or if you have a Mac, you do have to get a SD card. Um, I don't wanna call it a converter, but a attachment because most Macs don't come with it. Um, but definitely stay tuned for my next video as I review this camera. This is literally the best camera that you can get for a startup YouTube page. Um, yes, I normally use my phone, um, uh, GoPros and things like that, but man, that definitely changed the game with that on how clear it is and some of the other things that I can do with it. Um, but again, make sure you like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. I'm gonna head to work here in a minute. Um, I've been literally working seven days a week. But again, if you're new to the channel, make sure you browse, man. I appreciate all of you guys, all the new subscribers. I just hit 600. Um, I'm really, really shooting for getting close to a thousand here uh, before I leave to Texas in April. So I'm gonna be pushing a lot of content. Um, I appreciate all your support and let's go.